Welcome to episode 43 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I will talk about the K-Tool custom node that lets you align nodes, tweak image colors, monitor resources, and much more. Open Comfy UI, go to the manager, and then to the custom nodes manager. Search for K-Tool. Many times, I look in the manager to see the new nodes released, and this week, this node caught my attention. Click on install, then select the version on top and wait for it to be installed. After that, click the restart button and confirm the reboot. Click confirm again when prompted. Now the node is uh, installed. You should see a new align bar on top that you didn't have before. You also have a new button called monitor. If you click on it, it will open the monitor window. You can resize it by dragging from the bottom right corner, or you can move it by grabbing the area that says resource monitor and placing it wherever you want. Um, you can activate it only when needed. If you go to settings, you can click on K tool and find more settings there. For the resource monitor, you can enable or disable the monitor button. You can fade the edge, which is the area on the right. You can also upload a custom icon that will appear in the browser tab icon at the top, you can disable some options from the menu. For example, if I right click, I can find a K tool here and it has some options available. Let me quickly open a workflow um, like the one from episode three, any workflow will do. Now, if I right click and go to K tool, I can export the workflow as a PNG. It will then ask me if I want to include workflow information. If I say yes, it will take a screenshot of the workflow and include the workflow information. If I say no, it will only save a screenshot of the workflow. I'll click yes and save it with a name like my workflow or something similar. Now, if I open that image, you can see um, it has the workflow preview there. One thing I noticed is that some text is missing like the the prompt, both positive and negative. But other than that, it looks good. Uh, if I want to drag this image into Comfy UI, it will open that uh, workflow for me. It's pretty cool um, to have a screenshot preview that also includes uh, the workflow. Let's talk a little bit about this align bar. Uh, if you've used Photoshop or Illustrator's align tools before, uh, this should make sense to you. Let me make this note a little smaller and move it. If I hold the control key, I can select multiple nodes uh, like I did with these two nodes. If I click on the first button, it will align the left edges. If I click on the second button, it will align the right edges. It's easy to figure out from the icons. They show two rectangles and the bar next to them indicates where it will align. This button will horizontally align the centers. Let's say I select these four nodes. Uh, I can use this button to align all of them to the top or this button to align them to the bottom or the middle one to vertically align the centers. In this case, aligning them to the top will look good. This button will make all the nodes the same width as you can see. Now they all have the same size. If I change the sizes again, reselect the nodes and try again, you can see that it makes them the same size once more. However, since some of the nodes were smaller, the other nodes have a similar smaller size. Now from this button, you can also distribute the spaces. It looks at the far left and far right nodes and arranges the rest accordingly. I can manually move some of those closer together, select all four nodes, then align them to the top, make them the same width, and then distribute the spaces. Look at how good it looks now. You can also make them the same height, but that's not necessary for uh, some nodes like load checkpoints and via the decode. Um, we don't need that space. You can use control plus Z to undo these changes. Let's go to settings and then to K tool. I'll copy this color just to be able to reset it to the same value. Now I can change the colors of the node alignment icons. As you can see at the top, you can play around and customize it however you like. I'll paste the original value back. Uh, you can do the same for the background of the icons as well. Also, if you don't want to see them all the time, you can disable them from the settings. I think I'll leave them on since they're useful and the workflow will look much better when aligned. Let me show you something interesting. Double click on the canvas and let's add a load image. I'll just add this portrait. Now I'll add a preview. This is a simple workflow. One node 
loads the image and the other one previews it. We see that we have this cable connecting these two nodes, but what if the nodes are far apart and I don't have enough cable for that? Well, in Comfy UI, we can solve that, but let's say I want it to be cleaner and I want it to be wireless. I want the image information to travel without a cable to the other node. Well, we can do that. Let me show you how. Right click on this node and select set. For this node, I will select get. So this works in pairs. One is setting and the other is getting. I'll connect the image to set and the preview to get. Now I'll add a number to identify them. I think of them as portals. This is portal number one and whatever enters this portal will come out at the other end of the portal. I'll select that ID, which in my case is number one. Um, let me select a random image like this screenshot of this workflow. When I run the workflow, you'll see the image travel to the other side without a cable. If I select a different image, the same thing happens. This can be very useful when you have complex workflows as it helps you uh, organize them better. Let me show you with, with another example. Uh, let's say I have this workflow that I added to a group. In another group, I have a continuation of that workflow. Let's say I add a case sampler node here. To connect it, I would have to run a long cable from here to that workflow, which could make it less visually pleasing. So I can add a set node and connect the model to it. Then I give it an ID. On the other side, I add a get node with the same ID. When I select one, it will already show me the model. I can just drag it to the model input and it will work without that cable. For example, I can set this empty latent and use get on the other side and all the values will travel there. I can do the same for the positive and negative prompts if I want. If you don't want to take up much space, you can click on that dot and collapse them. It will look like little router antennas. Let's see if it actually works. I'll need a VAE decode and save image node here as well. I just noticed we also need a VAE node here. So uh, I'll add a set node for that VAE and uh, connect it to the load checkpoint. Then I'll set up the get node with the right value. Now the workflows are separated, but still connected. You'll see that first it will run the first part and generate an image, and then it will continue with the second part here. Pretty cool. Let's test more nodes. Double click on the canvas and search for sliders. Depending on what values you want, you can use sliders from 0 to 10, 0 to 100, or even up to 1000. I'll select the 100 slider, and it looks like this. You can connect this slider to integer values. For example, if I drag the cable, you can see a little dot here, so I can connect it to steps. For CFG, it doesn't show because it's a float value, not an integer, but it works for seed width, height, and batch size as well. Uh, let's say I want to control the steps. So if I move the slider to 29, that means I'll have 29 steps in the case sampler. If I mostly use only the steps or certain values in a workflow, I could collapse that node to make it smaller, leaving just the slider visible. Um, I can also edit the title and put steps there to know what value it is. Now it's easy to adjust and run the workflow. I've seen more nodes like this with all kinds of optimizations, but I can't test all of them. I just try to reduce the number of nodes and find one that has more of the nodes I need. Let's hope that in the future, Comfy UI will have everything I need. So I won't even need custom nodes because everything will be integrated. If I right click on the canvas, go to add node and then select K tool, I can see other nodes that it has. For example, I can select the display any node, which is similar to the show any node I used in some of the previous episodes. This node can display string values. If I connect this slider here, you can see it pick the value that was there. If I connect it to the clip text encoder, it will pick the tensor information. If I connect it to a positive node and add a prompt there, it will show that text information. You can take that information from the string output and connect it to other nodes. Moving on to the next node, let's add a load image and then connect it to a node called color adjustment. After that, we can add a save node or a preview. Since I'll be making a lot of changes, I'll select preview in this case. When I run it with the default values, nothing happens. So we get the original image. We can use the alignment buttons to align it and make it look nice. So how does this node work? We can adjust a slider like exposure and then run it to see the result. 
However, it's a bit time consuming to move the slider and then run it each time. Let's reset all the values to default by using the fix node option. Now, instead of running it manually, I'll use run on change. So each time it detects a change in the workflow, it will run automatically. Since this workflow is quick, we can use it. Now, if I change the exposure, you can see that it runs the workflow quickly and shows the result. So we can play with the sliders and see a live preview, similar to how you would in Photoshop. Let's reset it and try a different image, like this dark image. We can increase the exposure to make it brighter, but not too much, so we don't overexpose or burn the image. We can also play with the contrast a little, and it already looks better. Let's test it with this image that has a green tint to it. First, we'll reset the node. Then, for the tint, we can add either green or purple. So, we'll add some purple to reduce some of the green tones, and maybe adjust the temperature a little. Playing with the contrast also helps, and it already looks much better than before. Let's reload a portrait that looks good. From the style options, you can also select different types of filters, like those you see on Instagram. These filters apply various color variations to your images, so you can load a bunch of images and apply the same style to maintain a consistent color mood. Don't forget to deactivate Run On Change when you're not using it anymore. You also have an image size extractor node. For example, you can connect it to the load image node. Let's delete the rest of the nodes. Now, when I run it, it will pick the width and height of the image. Then I can add an empty latent image node if I want and just connect the width and height there. This can be useful when you have a control net image and want the generated image to match the same size. You also have an image resizer node Let's connect it quickly and add a preview. If I change the width and height, you can see the resulting image adjusted to that size. If I change it again and keep the ratio set to true, it will pick the smallest value. If I deactivate the ratio, I can set it to any size. Sometimes you need this node when you need an exact image size. There are more nodes you can try if you go to the manager and then to the custom nodes manager in the installed nodes and search for Ktool, you can actually click on the node to go to the GitHub page there, you'll find more information about the node in both Chinese and English. You can read about it, test more of the nodes, and maybe give a star to the author. Of course, you can also select some of the nodes it has from here, see what each node does, experiment, read the documentation, and have some fun. If you found something useful in today's episode, help this channel grow by liking and commenting. Thank you to all the legends and everyone who subscribed to the membership. Your support means a lot. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you on Discord.